Welcome to Thailand Lifetime. We are Nan and Odin. Today we tell the story of Siam Square. While walking from Arawan Shrine through the Siam Square to the MBK shopping mall. The Arawan Shrine was built in 1956 as part of the government owned Arawan Hotel to eliminate the bad karma believed to be caused by laying the foundations on the wrong date. The hotel's construction was delayed by a series of mishaps, including cost overruns, injuries of laborers, and the loss of a shipload of Italian marble intended for the building. Furthermore, Raja Prasong intersection had once been used to put criminals on public display. An astrologer advised building the shrine to counter the negative influences. Once the shrine was finished, the hotel construction proceeded without further incidents, making this shrine famous. To stay in touch, please subscribe. We are now at the Henri Dunant Road, named after the co-founder of the Red Cross which forms the east side of Siam Square. From here we will venture through Siam Square to Payatai Road and the MBK shopping mall which forms the west side of the square. Please give us your like. The area of Siam Square, which belongs to the Chulalongkorn University, was originally full of wooden houses and slum areas, until because of a fire incident the villagers had to be evacuated from the area. After the fire, Chulalongkorn University decided to develop the area of the Siam Square into a commercial place in order to prevent the slum community that originally resided there from returning. To stay in touch, please subscribe and turn on all notifications. The Southeast Asia Company was the first to develop in this area an open-air shopping mall. The first building was constructed in 1962 and finished in 1963. The original name of the square was Patumwan Square because it was located in the Patumwan district. However, the Seacon Development Company, the owner of the project at the time, felt that the name was too small and renamed it to Siam Square after the whole country. Siam being the old name of Thailand. Later, in 1991, various tutoring schools began opening in the Siam Square area, targeting students from the many schools nearby. Siam Square 
ended a period of turndown in 1996, when the Thai economy was in a state of recession from the IMF debt. The nearby construction of the BTS Skytrain at the time also caused traffic jams and drove customers to other shopping districts. To combat this issue, Chulalongkorn University initiated a project of turning Siam Square into a center of technology and development with many improvements to the area in 1999 and 2000. One such development was relocating the parking lot behind the Lido Cinema to the Vitayakit building, opening up the space for outside companies to invest in developing the area, which became known as Centerpoint and served as a center of recreation for teenagers. Today, Siam Square is maintained by the University Property Management Office of Chulalongkorn University. Siam Square has been compared to a one-tenth miniature of Bangkok in terms of catering for diverse needs, with over 4,200 shops in many styles and also many other types of services, including many successful Thai businesses, tutor schools, restaurants, cafes, fashion, art, design and many new emerging businesses. The customers or visitors vary from young age school and college students to office workers and foreign tourists, although most are students coming to attend the tutoring institutions concentrated in the area. At least 30 schools are located here, making Siam Square the number one tutoring center in the country. Siam Square 
is a popular destination and traffic hub with at least 400,000 people traveling in 2019 to and through Siam Square each day. The MBK or Mabun Krong shopping mall was the largest shopping center in Asia when it was opened in 1985. It is built on land leased from the adjacent Shulalong Krong University. This lease was last renewed in 2002. The MBK is named after the parents of the developer Sirashai Bulakul, named Ma and Bukrong. Their statues can be seen on the ground floor. In 2019, the eight-story-high MBK Center contained around 2,000 shops, restaurants and service outlets, including the four-story Tokyo department store. The MBK Center management reported in 2019 more than 100,000 daily visitors, half of whom were young Thai people and a third foreign visitors. While I was inside the center, it had been raining hard. During my visit today, I noticed big changes. The center has been renovated a lot. The center looks modern and more spacious. It looks like there are less shops inside now. But the general impression is modern and more appealing. We crossed this intersection in our video about Nan looking for the best way to go to work with her motorbike. You can enjoy a ride with her. You will find links to the videos and to the locations in the descriptions below. All the information I took from Wikipedia. If there is anything you want me to make a video about, just let me know in the comments below as well. With this picture of Alex's face, I started my video about Chula Longkorn House and the University Campus, as well as the Chula Longkorn Park. 
Today I will go back with the SkyTrain. During the pandemic, public transport is quite empty and I saw many people on the train wearing two face masks on top of each other. Thank you for watching our video. Please click like, comment and to stay in touch subscribe. Click the bell to get notified of our next upload. Just click a thumbnail to stay with Thailand lifestyle.